Canadian wildfires threatening Major League Baseball. DeGrom can't catch a break. Alec Manoa's got way too much pressure in his tires. And we've got a feel-good debut in the MLB. Let's get into the crossover. Canada, I absolutely love you guys. You guys are nice people, whatever, whatever. Toronto, six God, you gave us Drake, you gave us all this. I sing O oh, Canada anytime I go watch a hockey game. But we gotta we gotta figure this out. Like you guys drink milk out of bags, a little bit weird, but I'm okay with that. But now Nova Scotia's on fire. There's uncontrollable wildfires going on in Canada. The smoke has now made it its way down to New York and New Jersey. I look outside and it looks like I'm in some kind of movie that was filmed in Mexico when they put like that yellow filter over it just so that you know that you're in Mexico. It's it's getting out of control. I don't know what's going on. And today I go on Twitter and I see some story about apparently two naked witches in the forest eating a, eating a raw deer. Like I don't know if these two are related. I don't know if these witches were trying to cook the deer but they accidentally caught a tree. I don't know what's going on but let's figure it out. Okay, Canada. I need you guys to come together, pour some... Pour some milk in bags over this uh, over this fire. Let's do something, okay? We got a whole bunch of water around. If you want, I'll send you a bottle of water. Let's get this thing figured out. I hope everybody's safe. Hope everybody's fine. But let's get this under control, okay? And speaking of these Canadian fires, now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to put a picture right here of what Yankee Stadium looked like last night. There was just smoke in the air. It's people, saying, people at the stadium saying that it smelled weird. Um... It smells like a bonfire that if you threw tires and stuff on it, just not a good situation all around. Again, I hope everybody's safe. I hope everybody's okay. I hope Canada's getting their things figured out. But immediate effects on Major League Baseball. Um, watching the game last night, you could kind of just like see like almost like a smoke screen in front of the camera anytime somebody's at the plate or anything like that. People saying that it was hard to see fly balls. This and that, visibility problems. So Major League Baseball has stepped in and said that they are monitoring air quality in New York and in Philadelphia and threatening to postpone games that are supposed to be happening until this situation kind of gets resolved or they find some sort of alternate alternative to it. So Phillies and Yanks games, the Yanks are playing the White Sox. The Phillies, I'm not sure who they are playing, but those two series are now at risk of not being played or, or postponed, should I say. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Again, hope everybody's safe. Hope everybody's okay. But Major League Baseball is stepping in, doing their own investigation. I don't really know what that means if they're just monitoring air quality for the players, for the fans, for both. I don't know what's really going on. But that's a situation with these. And now we go into an even tougher story here. Jacob DeGrom's season has come to an end as he announced that he will need Tommy John surgery. And this is kind of just heartbreaking. I feel like DeGrom, everybody recognizes him as one of the best pitchers in the MLB. Um, he's had kind of a run lately of, of injury problems, stuff like that. In 2020, he only played 12 games. In 21, he's played 15. In 22, he played 11. And in 2023, he only played six games. So within the last four years, he hasn't gone more than 15 games. Um which is kind of kind of concerning for him. Obviously, his health is first and foremost. Um, but also as a fan, like you kind of like to see the better pitchers pitching. You like to see the pitching wars. Uh, I was kind of excited to see him on the Rangers. I feel like the Rangers have like a kind of a good amount of momentum going. They've got a good squad there. I was excited to see him in the playoffs. But unfortunately, that's not going to be happening. Looking at his kind of uh, his stats here, he is two and zero with a two point six seven ERA this year. But if you break it down between March and April, his first game of the season in March against the Phillies, he pitched 3.2 innings, um, allowing six hits and five runs. And in the next five games, he's only allowed six runs, so tough start there. But in April, he pitched 26 innings, and he's got a 1.35 ERA. So he was kind of coming on um, after that first tough game out in Philly. His last game was on Friday against the Yankees, which I was watching live, where he pitched 3.2 innings. He was Pitching really well, he only gave up one hit 
and you kind of just like see on one of on, on one of his last pitches, you kind of just see something something happened. And um, watching him come off the field, I kind of got that sense of okay, maybe he's not okay. But I didn't know how serious it was. But he did announce that he will be needing Tommy John surgery, which means he's shutting it down for the rest of the season. Again, super sad story there. Watching the video of him announcing that he's going to need Tommy John and that this is the end of the season, you can't help but feel for him. He was crying, just talking about how tough this is, and I couldn't even imagine. Couldn't even imagine what he's been through in the past four years. Is again, it's just a sad situation overall. Again, first and foremost is his own health and hoping that he's okay. But also as a baseball fan, just wanting to see Degrom out there. Um, but somebody I'm not excited to see. Okay. Especially after recent comments that he's made about Garrett Cole this and Garrett Cole that. And in an interview he was asked, oh, do you feel any pressure? And he stood up there with his little his little smirk, little grin saying, pressure is what you put in your tires. Alec Manoa has been sent to the Florida Complex League. Now, I didn't even know what this league was. I, I, had, I had never heard of it personally. Um, but apparently it's some rookie, some rookie league where he's going to be facing up against like 16 year olds that are just out of high school. Um, just not having a good season at all. When he played against the Yankees, he came out, Garrett Cole was on the mound. He tried to do like this little, this little cool walk from the bullpen into the, into the dugout, looking at Cole kind of saying, Oh, I'm better than you. You know what I said about you? I called you the biggest cheater in baseball and I stand behind it. His last game was on Monday against the Astros where he pitched one-third of an inning. One-third of an inning. Gave up seven hits and six runs. His record this year is one and seven with a 6.36 ERA. Now, I don't have any problems with trash talk, okay? I get it. It's part of the sport. You want to get into other people's heads. You want to do this. You want to do that. You want to build a brand for yourself. You want to build a name for yourself. All for it. But when you go out and put out these kinds of numbers... And then you're coming at one of the best pitchers in the MLB and Garrett Cole. What 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 are you doing, pal? What do you like what do you, what are you actually doing? Okay? You're out of here. Florida Complex League. I can't wait to see him pitching, you know, with who? Trevor Bauer, because that's his next destination. Okay. Alec Murnau is gonna be Trevor Bauer's new teammate. They can both go explore the J- Japanese minors together. Alec Manoa, get him out of here. Don't like the guy. And with these stats, one and seven, six, three, six ERA. Yeah, buddy, you're gone. Florida Complex League. Now, even though I don't like the guy, again, I just hope everybody does well. I hope everybody gets their stuff figured out. For the sake of baseball, I hope that Alec Manoa goes down there. He gets his he gets his mojo right. He he figures out what he was doing, whether it was some control problem or something. I don't know if they're gonna build him back up through 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 AAA. I don't know if they're planning on bringing him back. I don't know what the plan is with the Blue Jays. I don't know if he's going to get traded, picked up by another team. But I feel like this guy is just universally hated. And I can see why. And now he is playing in the Florida Complex League. And the memes are going crazy. You did it to yourself, Alec Manoa. I don't know what else to say. You're gone. Uh, Going on to the Yankees. Nestor Cortez out for two weeks with a shoulder strain. So... This is kind of more just like a trend I think I've been seeing this past year where pitchers just aren't being able to stay healthy. Now, I know a lot of people are talking about, is it the pitch clock? And I think it's kind of got to be it. You know what I'm saying? Again, I am for the pitch clock. As a fan watching Major League Baseball on TV, I feel like it goes by a lot quicker. I feel like it's easier to sit down and watch a game on your couch. Now, when you go into the ballpark, I feel like... It takes away from the whole ballpark experience. I feel like you go to a ballpark, you're there for for three hours, whatever it is, but you're kind of just you're hanging out, you're you're with the boys, or you're with your family, or you're with your girlfriend, whatever it is. You sit down, you chat, you have a beer, um, you watch the game, you you don't watch the game, you kind of pay attention and stop paying attention for a little bit, have a conversation. I feel like it was more of a more of a pastime kind of thing where you kind of go to the ballpark. And I feel like now with this pitch clock, the ballpark experience is getting a little bit worse. Because let's say you get up, you got to go get a beer. You end up missing, what, an inning and a half because of the lines. Just trying to get a beer, you end up missing an inning and a half. While usually before you would go out, you would maybe watch your team bat. You'd watch Aaron Judge come up to bat. And then you'd say, okay, now 
The Yankees are pitching. Let me go get my beer. I'll be back before the Yankees start batting again. And I feel like that's kind of been taken away. And then again, the pitch clock with the pitchers, I feel like it's just putting way too much stress on the pitchers. Let's say you do have a long inning, right? You you allow a walk or you allow a couple hits. You got a couple guys on base, whatever it is. Let's say you have a 30-pitch inning, but now that 30-pitch inning is happening in 10 minutes. You're throwing 30 pitches full speed as hard as you can in 10 minutes. I feel like it's too much strain on the pitchers. I don't know... Maybe you extend the pitch clock a little bit more. I know that once you're on base, once you have players on base, you can extend the pitch clock. But I feel like it's just way too short of a pitch clock. I also agree with MLB in saying that you don't want the pitcher to get off the mound, do three laps around the mound, get some rosin on their hand, and wait two minutes between pitches. I feel like that's totally acceptable and makes sense for the MLB. But also, I feel like the pitch clock might just be just just a tad bit too short. Just a tad bit too short. You're putting way too much pressure on these pitchers where they're throwing 100 miles an hour fastball. Then you got to get the ball. You got five seconds, eight seconds, whatever it is. You got to get right back to it, throw another 100. I feel like it's putting way too much strain on the pitchers, which I feel like is why you're seeing so many injuries. Now, how do you fix this? I don't know. Maybe, like I said, extending the, the, the pitch clock. But personally, I think the pitch clock is good. I feel like the pitch clock is there for a reason. It's taken away from... The ballpark experience, it's taken away from from the pitchers. But at the end of the day, Major League Baseball did do it for the views on television because that's where they make all their money anyway. So I feel like at the end of the season, they're going to get together. They're going to reevaluate the pitch clock, and we'll see what happens next season if the pitch clock is back, which it probably will be, but if it stays the same or if there are some changes. So excited to see that. And now let's get into a feel-good story. This guy, Ellie De La Cruz, shortstop for the Cincinnati Reds, 21 years old. And this is probably one of the funniest videos that I've seen all week. Okay, the video of him getting called up. I don't know if they were at the airport or if they were at the team hotel or whatever it was. And I don't know who the guy talking to him was. I'm assuming it was uh, the minor league coach uh, for the Cincinnati Reds organization. Um, you see Ellie De La Cruz walk in. He's got his bag on him. And coach is like, oh, you got everything. You got your video games. You got this. You got that. And then he says, whose bag is that over there? And Ellie De La Cruz's face just, I don't know. I don't know. He looked like a little kid who he went out to uh, to somebody's sleepover or something like that. And he like snuck a beer in the bag. And the parents just found the bag. And he knows that there's a beer in there. And he's like, um, not mine. Not, not my bag. But I'm not going to tell you whose bag it is either. I'm not, I'm not snitching on anybody. It was just a funny video. His facial expression was just hilarious. And then when coach says, it's your bag because you got to go to Cincy, you just see the amount of relief. I don't know I don't know what he thought was in the bag. I don't know what these guys are bringing in their bags and who's got what and what he knows and who doesn't. But that's not, that's not what we're here for. Feel good story. Seeing him getting called up to the major leagues and... Instant impact. Absolutely instant impact. He was the fifth youngest player in the last 100 years to bat cleanup in the MLB. Cleanup is the fourth spot in in the lineup and instant impact. 112 mile an hour double for his first hit in the MLB. Now, when I look at Ellie De La Cruz and I just look at like his stature and I just look at the way that he plays and his speed and his bat, it kind of gives me... Kind of gives me O'Neill Cruz vibes here. It kind of gives me O'Neill Cruz vibes a little bit. In the minors, he had 12 home runs with 1.031 OPS, which is absolutely insane. Absolutely deserved the call up to the Cincinnati Reds. The Cincinnati Reds who are in need of a little bit of spark, of a little bit of jolt. They're 4.5 games out of the wild card. So hopefully Cincinnati can can use this Ellie De La Cruz story. They can get some momentum. They can win some games. And hopefully they can find themselves back in the playoffs because Cincinnati Reds have been very bad for a very long time. So hopefully they can get that figured out. That's the feel-good story of the day. Let's see what goes on in Canada. All respect, prayers to DeGrom. Hope that, that, is, uh, that his surgery goes well and that can be back on the mound soon. Alec Manoa, you're gone. Go say hi to Trevor Bauer. Nestor Cortez injured. Hopefully he'll be coming back soon. Pitch clock, is it too fast? Is this the reason that the pitchers are are getting injured? Let me know down below you guys' thoughts, your guys' opinions. 
Should they extend the pitch clock, keep it the same? Do you think it has nothing to do with why these pitchers are getting injured so much? Let me know down below. I appreciate you guys for watching, and that's been The Crossover.